And well, today I'm just going to start right by turning to a passage in Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to start in verse 19. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. So if you all turn with me to Galatians chapter 5, in verse 19. All right, and as it reads, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred. And the list goes on to, you know, envy, murders, drunkenness. And at the end it says, And the like... Er, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in past time, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Today I'm going to be focusing on one of these issues. And as you can see, many of these issues are common in today's world. One of these words I will be focusing on, and in some states... This sin has been legalized by man. Not quite here in New York yet, but in other states, yes. Can you guess which one? That sin is sorcery. Now you're probably all wondering, how has sorcery been legalized? Well, we're going to break down this term a little bit further here in Galatians. I entitle my sermonette, because I do like titles myself, Modern Sorcery. As we know, sorcery, or as it's called in the King James Version, witchcraft itself is very evil and is a sin against God. And that is clearly stated in Deuteronomy 18.10 if you want to jot that down as a reference, Deuteronomy 18.10. Now, this term is found in this, the term sorcery. It is found in the scripture several times. In fact, I counted, and this is sorcery and witchcraft, at least 28 times in both the New and Old Testament. Now, however... Within the original Greek text of the New Testament, there are different words that the apostles used for the term sorcery. The word that they used here in Galatians to describe sorcery is the Greek word pharmakeia. Now, right off the back, what English word does this sound like to you? Pharmakeia. That's right. I think I heard a whisper. Pharmacy. It mean, it, that's where we get the word pharmacy. Is from this word right here. Pharmakeia. And as a pharmacist, not myself, but pharmacy and pharmacist, they deal in medicine and drugs. Now this scripture isn't talking about medicinal drugs for medicine in terms of dealing with health issues, but it is speaking of recreational drug use. Pharmakeia, as it is, it's worded differently in different definitions, but it's, you break it down for it to mean the use of drugs for sorcery or magical arts or spells. This passage shows that God does not approve of such things. You see this here two other times, this very word in pharmakeia, only two other times. And that is in Revelation 9.21 and Revelation 18.23. That's for your reference. I will be staying here in Galatians for right now, though. Revelation 9.21 and 18.23 were those scriptures, though. Now, you're probably wondering, why would they translate it into sorcery? 
What's that got to do with anything? Drugs and sorcery. I was kind of baffled by that myself. But that is because witches and sorcerers back in the days would administer a drug in some sort of way to clear their mind, put them into a trance, and it would make a pathway for a demon or, well, yeah, a demon to enter them and take over their minds since their minds were gone from the drug's effect. We, as God's people, are to be in control of our minds. And drugs do not make that possible. And that, if, if you want a little reference for that, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 gives light to what our thoughts should be. And that is Christ and His ways. Another problem with the drug abuse, or the abuse of drugs, is that they lead to instant intoxication, as, as though you were drunk. And guess what? Drunkenness is on that list as well, right here in Galatians. You read that further down in verse 21. It's on there. In fact... There's another scripture, but I'm going to turn to another scripture, though, that describes this a little bit in an interesting way. And we're going to turn to Proverbs chapter 23. If you all turn there with me. Proverbs chapter 23, and we're going to look at verse 21. Proverbs 23. Verse 21. It says, For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and the drowsiness will clothe a man in rags, or with rags. And there's that word again, drunkenness. But we're gonna we're gonna go down to verse 31, and uh, it gets a little interesting with this. Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent, and it stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things, and your heart will utter perverse things. Does that not sound like the effect of some drugs that you hear about out there? It does. It definitely does. Yes, you will see, or yes, you will be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea, or like one who lies at the top of the mast, saying, They have struck me, but I was not hurt. But they have beaten me, but I did not feel it. When I shall, or what, when shall I awake, that I may seek another drink? So this passage is more so targeting the effects of drunkenness from alcohol, but as I said earlier, drugs induce an immediate state of intoxication, as the world calls it, a high. And that is not something God wants us to be doing, as it clearly says there in Galatians and right here in Proverbs. I wanted to express this because there are a lot of dark influences of pharmacaea out in this world. And some of these sinful acts have been made legal, such as the use of recreational marijuana. Just because man says it's okay doesn't mean that it is okay with God. We also know that these sinful lifestyles are practiced by many today and can pressure their ways upon others. But as Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10 says, do not let sinners entice you. We need to follow God and not the world, no matter what. Let's also remember that our bodies are the temple of God. And these abusive drugs damage your body. We do not want to be the ones 
responsible for desecrating our spiritual temple. And God does not want us to harm ourselves. And pharmacaea will definitely do that. Pharmacaea is definitely a dual term, including both drugs and actual sorcery. And this modern day sorcery is very real and has many victims under its evil spell. Remember that those who do not repent in Christ's name and continue in the ways of pharmacaea will quote unquote not inherit the kingdom of God. Many people like to say that it only talks about drug or alcohol. It doesn't mention drugs in the scripture. It does. It definitely does. And I also definitely just wanted to target this because we have some of our brethren here that will be going back to school and we know those influences are out there in the school systems and we gotta, we've got to protect our children in any way that we can and get that message out. And God's Word speaks of it. Drugs are sorcery. Sorcery is sin. Don't be a sorcerer and let substance lock you in a spell. Have control of your mind and let your mind be filled with the Holy Spirit of God.